What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host Captain Zack and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called, Entitled Mom Causes Her Child to Fail School. I worked for a school district. It's absurdly rare that I will ever have to deal with any parents. Today was the exception however. Sometimes a student will be removed from school for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they are unable to attend because of an illness and sometimes because they got into trouble. Many times we will provide them with a laptop so they can do work at home to help maintain their grades or to effectively do all their work from home. This is usually facilitated through the guidance office and it's the guidance department that will have all the interactions with the parents. For some reason though, today was different. So I'm sitting in my office next to a stack of computers that I'm breaking down and fixing like usual because kids around here love to break things it seems. A woman walks in and my boss does the initial greeting while I just kind of keep an eye out and listen to what's going on because I don't recognize the woman. At first I just assumed that she was a substitute teacher or something. I assume this because in order to get up to our office you have to go through one of the doors. And the only door that a parent could go through is monitored, and if they have to go somewhere in the school, someone is supposed to be there with them. That's how it's supposed to work, at least. So she starts talking to my boss, and I notice her pull out one of our laptops. I also immediately notice that it's broken because I have gained a keen eye for this, and it was pretty obvious. I would love to post a picture, but that could very easily identify us if anyone from the local area happens to read this. She starts going into how it fell apart and how her kids didn't do anything and all that crap. In my experience, anyone who is immediately on the defensive about what happened to a device is guilty. They know what happened to it and they did it. Knowing what's about to happen, I immediately clear a space on my bench because I know my boss is going to ask me to take a look at it. I get the laptop and give it a look over. Both hinges are detached from the plastic which takes a bit of doing to accomplish. On these laptops, there's actually a supporting bar that goes up the side of the monitor on the inside where the LCD gets screwed into. It doesn't really do much other than add a little bit of extra rigidity to the screen. Somehow, one of these snapped in half. I say somehow because the LCD was not broken on that side, but it was on the other side. Multiple keys had been broken off of the keyboard, and this particular type of keyboard is pick resistant. So. My guess is that kid ripped them off, likely in anger. Various parts of the plastic are broken as well. What it looks like happened was that the kid got angry, punched the screen, and probably bent it back, breaking the side support, and then started slamming down on the keyboard with his fist, and then throwing the laptop. This might seem like a guess, but sadly I have seen this exact thing happen before in a classroom. I want to point out that at this point, I have absolutely no idea which kid this laptop was assigned to because I haven't looked it up. I go into my analysis on the damage and jot down a few notes to tell my boss all while I can hear the lady talking about how she has absolutely no idea how it happened and all this other crap. I reference that instance I just mentioned to my boss because he remembered it from the previous year where a kid had done this to a laptop and I comment about how the damage is consistent with that and how it's consistent with the keyboard being hit due to bent metal and all of that and the hinges and how it's consistent with being thrown because of how the plastic was broken. This woman immediately starts going off saying about how she's not going to pay for that piece of crap laptop because it's a piece of crap and it didn't work anyway and how her little angel would not possibly do this and claiming it was all a lie. At this point, I didn't claim the kid did anything and just read remarks to my boss that the damage was consistent. This woman doesn't know it, but we're not going to sit there and charge her or her kid for the damage to the laptop. We give older laptops to these kids knowing full well they may never come back. It's not that it was a bad laptop, it was just old and we had phased out those laptops. When I say they're not bad, it had a physical hard drive, 4 gigs of RAM, and a lower end i3. It's not going to work for gaming or anything, but it will generally get you through doing what you need to do for school. So my boss continues to try and defuse the situation, I pull the hard drive and pop it into my external hard drive reader and start going over what's in the hard drive. I look in the student's profile and I immediately see some stuff in downloads, including some inappropriate pictures, as well as a couple game installers like Steam as well as the Minecraft downloader. 
Knowing Steam very well myself, I look in and I can see a number of games that were installed in the Steam directory. I can tell you right now that I know the games and I know full well that they will never work to be playable on any one of these laptops. These laptops have a really crappy integrated graphics card. These things are not designed for games, but for word processing and general business use type things. And I make note of this and continue on with booting up the hard drive and a second computer of the same type. So I go in and look at the browsing history and I can see things like free VPN searches and how to access Tor servers and some crap that will make a pervert blush. I want to point out that normally trying to research things like this would be blocked off on our firewall. But anytime I'm going in to check the history of a computer that comes in, I put in a specific IP address that is flagged by our firewall to be exempt from most policies to allow literally any website to go in, as well as additional logging for that IP so it knows it was me who went through. So if we do an audit of the firewall, it can clearly be seen that it was me doing some sort of research type thing. This is where it gets interesting. I called my boss over and the mother as well. I start pointing out all the different things that the kid did, such as first installing games, which I showed her on the paper the kid signed, he said he wouldn't do. We allow kids to install things on the take-home laptops because sometimes things are needed, and they're not attached to our domain and will not authenticate to our wireless network. And our DHCP server has a Mac filter that knows that if it sees something too isolated, it can deny access while in school. This is effectively so it can't infect anybody if it has a virus or anything like that. Because as soon as that kid returns the laptop or any kid, we wipe the hard drive and put a brand new image on it. Things get interesting when I start bringing up the inappropriate sites and how to access the part of the internet, as I described it, where many illegal things are. But it was clear that he had never actually managed to access it because he didn't have a Tor browser or anything of equivalent nature. I calmly go through everything that was on the computer and she freaking loses it. She accuses us of trying to frame her kid and how she's lucky that she doesn't kick our butts and all this other crap. The whole time, I'm just kind of staring at her, emotionless. I'm just letting her rant. My boss walked over to his desk and dials the resource officer on the phone but turns off the volume and has it on speakerphone so he can hear what's happening. And because our extensions include our room numbers, he knows where to go. 20 or 30 seconds later, he shows up. As soon as she sees him, she starts yelling that we're trying to frame her poor baby and how we're violating her by showing her disgusting images and all of this crap. We just kind of look at them and he knows pretty well what's going on and escorts her away. So after everything was settled, I learned that the reason why the damage looked so familiar was that the kid who had done the damage before was the same exact kid. Turns out this kid had gotten suspended and that's why he was not allowed in school and needed to complete his work outside of school. For privacy reasons, they wouldn't tell me why he was suspended and I don't really care either way. I assumed it was something violent in nature though. Now, since he violated the user agreement that he signed accepting the computer, he was told that he would no longer be given a computer to use and that if he could not get a computer on his own or his parents couldn't, he would fail and be held back for the year because he was going to be suspended for far too long. His parents were also informed that they were going to have to pay for the laptop. On a positive note, for them at least, when I looked up how much the computer costs now, which is what they would have to pay, it was about 80 bucks. I was a little bit generous when I looked it up too, and I found a piece of crap one, but no one had the same model and had lesser specs because honestly, I don't care. And I will never see a dollar of that money and neither will the department. I think it was more of a punishment for the whole situation. The kid, now on top of being suspended, has a no trespass order as well as his mother who also has a no trespass order. This means that they are not allowed on school grounds during or after school hours. Part of the trespass order specifies as well that if she is to contact the school then she must do so in writing only. This means that she has to write a letter and mail it to the principal and that the principal will determine whether or not he will respond via letter or by phone call. It's funny too because if he calls and she does not answer, she's not allowed to call back to return the call. As messed up and as crazy as that is, it's true. I would have thought that this type of thing wouldn't be allowed, but apparently the town has some lawyers who got it approved and everything because this has apparently been a long-standing thing. I just think it's hilarious. Okay, wow. <laughs> wow, the one thing I got from this very long 2,000 word story 
that this dude used speech to text to write was that this kid had a ton of issues and he needs some help. Wow. All right, this story is called Entitled Parent Calls Me a Sinner and Tries to Steal My Switch. Witness and New Mexico Bring Her Down. Context. I am a 13-year-old, non-binary atheist that likes to wear clothes made for men in public. This is important. That goes to the nearest park to hang out with friends and play on my Switch. I wanted to relax after a full six hours of school and I had no homework. So I went to a park, sat under the shade of a tree, and took out my Switch. It has Splatoon-themed Joy-Cons because I love the game Splatoon so much. This event happened a week ago and my memory is booty, so I'll try my best to remember everything that occurred. Here's the cast. Entitled parent, big dumb. Entitled kid, a spoiled goblin who looks 9 to 13 years old. Me, gay, nice man. Witness, I was playing Splatoon, Octo Expansion, great DLC, until a kid went up to me. This is how it went. What game is that? Oh, the game is Splatoon. What's Splatoon? He said it like that. <gasps> How dare you not know what this game is? It is a fun multiplayer game where you can play as a squid or octopus, and you can do turf wars, ranked battles, and private battles with friends. There are also single player at- You talk too much. Anyways, can I try? I do not trust people with my things, no matter what. Um, no, sorry. I'm not comfortable with people using my things. Entitled Kid huffed and walked back to where he came from. Of course, I thought this was the end. Nope, it's never an entitled parent story without the parent. This large, unfit woman with blonde hair walks up to me while entitled kid is behind her with a poo-eating grin. My son said that you wouldn't let him play with your game. Ah, knowing crap is about to happen, I'm sorry, but I don't trust anyone with my things. Well, you should trust him. He's a nice boy and would never hurt anyone. You can trust him with your game. I want to play it. Give me now. No, I will not give you anything. Entitled parent looks at my outfit and gasps. I was wearing an Adidas hoodie for men and jeans for boys. That outfit. I think you got everything wrong. These look like they're for men. They don't look feminine at all. I know. So what? You're a girl, that's what. Go change. Okay, first things first. I'm non-binary, so I don't care if it's for men or not. Second, you're not my mom. My mom accepts me. I don't care what you think. How dare you talk to an adult like that? You're going to hell. Sorry, what? I don't believe in that. Speechless, but she also says, What? I don't believe in hell, heaven, or God. I'm atheist. Accept it. Scream so loud my sensitive ears died. How dare you not believe in the Lord? You sinners are ruining my son. How dare you? Uh, I want to play. Look, you made my angel cry. As punishment, I will take your game as compensation. Now, I'm a chill person. I didn't snap. It's difficult for me to anyway. I'm also a weak and emotional person, so I can't take it when people yell at me. I started to cry. Entitled Mother then grabbed my Switch out of my hands when I was about to beat the final boss in the Octo expansion. Thankfully, I was granted with good luck. Cue nice man and witness. Hey, what do you think you're doing? This sin that took away my angel's game, so we're taking it back from her. What I saw was a whole different story. She came here with the game and you snatched it from her. I kindly ask you to return it to this girl. She is no sinner. She doesn't believe in God. She says she's non-binary when there's only two genders. She's a sin. Nice man looks at me. She can believe and do what she wants. You have no authority over her. Now I ask you to hand the game over to her. It's a behind. Yes, it is. Now go away. You're not involved in this. If you don't leave, I will call the police. Cue the witness. I saw everything too. Um. Entitled parent then finds out that her plan is failing, so she tries to run. But witness and nice man shoved her and grabbed the switch from her and gave it to me. Entitled parent was yelling about violation or whatever while entitled kid was bawling his eyes out. Now, I managed to make it out of there alive because witness told me to run. I do not know what happened after that since I ran home like what witness instructed me to do. But I hope she got a punishment. Come on, Karen, you should know better. <laughs> you should know that this person doing their own thing has no effect at all on you or your son's lives. So in conclusion, just don't do... 
<laughs> what is this story? <laughs> this story is called, My Entitled Aunt Demands My Foreign Goods. My family is split down the middle. One half is very posh, wealthy, with their own businesses and medical offices, whilst the other half are very redneck, uh, poverty, and just plain nasty temper-wise. Due to this, I left my family, uh, changed my name, live in a city that they don't know, and changed my number. Well, I have a blog that I post pictures on. My collection of cute oddities, uh, my rare or just plain cute plushies, etc. Somehow, my aunt and family found out about it, probably through social media. Coming back from Japan, I have lots of new plushies, snacks, and clothing. I was excited to show off pictures and talk to others about the trip. Well, my aunt saw it and decided to comment about how cute my stuff was, how expensive it looked, and how she wishes she had the same opportunities I have. Mind you, she spends her money on junk food, a rundown apartment, loads of cats, and spoiled children. She had the gall to message me asking what was hers and when she could meet up to get it because they're so much stuffed animals, surely you bought them for entitled children. I tell her there's nothing for her, that it's all mine, and she decides to go on a tangent about how spoiled I am. How I'm a nasty person then decided to remind me that my deceased mother killed herself just to be rid of me. My mother passed away several years ago because of mistreatment from her husband, aka my father. Mistreatment that this aunt basically told her she deserved. I ripped this aunt a new one as that was the day of the anniversary and before blocking her, I told her maybe if she wasn't such an entitled binge, mooching from the government, maybe she could have nice things. I'm sorry this sounds like a rant, I just hate my entitled aunt with a passion. And yes, this happened yesterday as that was the anniversary date. Okay, wow, how could you ever say anything like that to anyone? Okay, how do you expect to get anything from someone if you're just gonna be a jerk? Okay, well, anyways, poor dude, woman, thing, person, moving on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.